A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 22nd of June 2022. Displayed here are the list of news articles that I have chosen for today's discussion. See as I told you in every discussion it will be made a point to discuss a topic in both preliminary and mains perspective. Okay? So all these four topics are covered on the basis of both your preliminary preparation as well as your mains preparation. Now without wasting much time let's get into the first news article discussion. Now look at this op-ed article. Basically this article talks about artificial intelligence that is AI. It focuses on issues in artificial intelligence technology then it talks about UNESCO's recommendation for the AI. And finally, it talks about the significance of the UNESCO's recommendations. Okay, so this is the structure of this article. In this discussion, we will look at the points mentioned in the article in detail. Okay, I have displayed the syllabus regarding this discussion here. You can just go through it. Now, let us start our discussion. Firstly, what is artificial intelligence? See, AI or artificial intelligence refers to the simulation of human intelligence in missions. To put it in simple words, artificial intelligence involves making missions think and act like humans. We are encountering artificial intelligence everywhere in our daily lives. Am I right? See, from robots in online games to complex algorithms that help us monitor and predict weather patterns, we could see the artificial intelligence. It won't be wrong if we say AI is omnipresent. See, AI or artificial intelligence has so many applications. It is only through AI precision agriculture function. By analyzing the medical records, AI will help us predict outbreaks of epidemics. I already mentioned the role of AI in weather pattern prediction also, right? In modern policing, by employing AI technology and facial recognition, countries like China are developing predictive policing. Here, predictive policing is nothing but nabbing a criminal before he commits a crime. Then artificial intelligence is used in traffic management, supply chain optimization, targeted AD campaigns, and finally, AI can also be trained to write programs. All in all, the application and potential for AI is huge. In 2021, the AI market in India alone no, accounted for 7.8 billion US dollar. So it is very important for our country also. Having seen the applications of AI technology, now let us discuss some issues associated with AI technology. First issue is unequal representation in data. See the AI programs make decision by analyzing various data. Take Google Lens for example. For people who are not aware, Google Lens is an image recognition technology. Okay. If you open Google Lens and focus on say a shoe, Google will identify it and help us with additional information about the shoe. But how does Google Lens recognize that you are pointing your camera at a shoe? How it works is, the Google Lens program is fed beforehand with lots and lots of images of shoes. Through this process, the Google Lens program learns what a shoe looks like. Through it, it helps to identify it. Here, the accuracy of the Google Lens in identifying an object depends on the data that it is fed beforehand. So if the data feed to the AI programs are not representative of the society, then the AI might become biased and discriminatory. See, we know India and China account for one third of the global population. But in ImageNet, only 3% of images were of Indian and Chinese. See here ImageNet is a popular data set used to train AI software. Basically, it is a bunch of photos. Okay. So if such a data set is used to develop facial recognition algorithms, then the results will be discriminatory. Am I right? This is particularly scary with the use of predictive policing. Biases in facial recognition technologies no, might lead to wrongful arrest. So this is the first issue. 
Now the next issue with the AI technology is in terms of lack of representation in people who develop these AI technologies. This is an issue because people who write the programs might include their biases in their codes. This might make the AI programs biased. These are the two major issues associated with AI technology. To address these issues, no, a global strategy has been evolved by UNESCO. This is nothing but UNESCO's recommendations on the ethics of artificial intelligence. Now let us see some important points from this UNESCO's recommendations. The three main stakeholders in AI technology are people, government and the business developing in this technology. Here, if the businesses involved in AI do not put people's interests first, the inequality due to AI will increase. So the main aim of this UNESCO's recommendation is to shift the balance of power between people and the businesses and governments developing AI. Okay. The next is regarding representation. We saw lack of representation is one of the issues, right? To address this, it recommends steps that have to be taken to make sure that women and minority groups are fairly represented on the AI design teams. So now the next recommendation is regarding privacy. Data privacy must be ensured. See control over the data must be in the hands of the user and not the corporations. Users must be allowed to access and delete information as needed. UNESCO also recommends that AI must not be used to develop mass surveillance programs. Next, the recommendation says that the psychological and cognitive impact that these systems can have on children and young people must be kept in mind while developing AI technology. Finally, UNESCO says that member states should invest in and promote not only digital media and information literacy skills, but also socio-emotional and AI ethics skill has to be promoted. This is to strengthen critical thinking and competencies in the digital era. So these are some important points from UNESCO's recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence. This is a global guideline that individual countries can refer to and adopt in their national policies. Already Finland in the year 2017 adopted these recommendations in the AI strategy. Experiences from Finland shows that governments can effectively promote ethical AI use without compromising the desire to be on the cutting edge of new technologies. With this, we will also see some efforts taken by India regarding the AI technology or artificial intelligence technology. Firstly, in the year 2018, Niti Aayog released the National Strategy on Artificial Intelligence. This strategy highlights the massive potential of AI in solving complex social challenges that are faced by the Indian citizens across areas such as agriculture, health and education. Then it also highlighted the economic potential of AI. The next one is Nidhi Aayog's AI for All campaign. It focused on developing ethical AI governance. It helped in the development of AI tools and technology which has humanistic values at its core. So that is all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about what is AI, then we saw about the applications of AI technology, then we saw the issues associated with AI technology. After that, we saw some points from the UNESCO's recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence. And finally, we ended our discussion with the steps taken by India in terms of AI technology. See, this topic is very much relevant for your UPSC mains examination. Also, in a way, I made you cover this topic in prelims perspective also. So, with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article mentions that in the 12th meeting of Joint Working Group, India and Nepal discussed about curbing transborder criminal activities. Also, they discussed about the curbing of terror activities and strengthening the border infrastructure. So, let us now know few facts about the India-Nepal border. Nepal is a close neighbor of India 
and it shares a border of over 1850 km some sources say it is just 1751 km and when you ask me what are all the states that are sharing borders with Nepal it includes Sikkim, West Bengal, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. See, such a close border resulted in unique ties of friendship and cooperation and deep-rooted people-to-people contacts of kingship and culture. The diplomatic relations no, started with the signing of the India-Nepal Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1950. Under the treaty, Nepalese citizens avail facilities and opportunities on par with the Indian citizens. Actually, nearly 8 million Nepali citizens live and work in India. This was made possible by a long tradition of free movement of people across the borders. And this was strengthened by the treaty also. See, the treaty agreed to grant certain privileges to the nationals of one country in the territory of the other. This is somewhat like a reciprocal basis. Okay. So, now what are these privileges? Firstly, it is to provide the same privileges on matters of residence, ownership of property, participation in trade and commerce, movement and other privileges of a similar nature. So, it provides free movement of people and goods, which is nothing but another way of saying an open border. Open border means that nationals of either country do not require a passport or visa to cross over into each other's territory. Okay. So overall, India and Nepal have the open border system. And the citizens of both the countries cross over the India-Nepal border for livelihood opportunities, marriages, familial ties, etc. etc. Now, when countries share border, security-related issues are one of the prime concerns. But in case of India-Nepal, no, they are open border. Plus, it is also porous. See, what do you mean by porous border? We call a border porous when the security along the border is not tight or when it is liberal due to the bilateral relation and it becomes almost impossible to prevent the movement of people. When people of two countries share high cultural and economic ties, the porosity is present even when there are tight security measures restricting the movement of people. So you can understand the scenario when there is an open border. Because it facilitates border porosity. Such open and porous India-Nepal border makes them vulnerable to threats such as trafficking in persons, that is human trafficking, then trafficking in drugs, fake currency, migrant smuggling, arms trafficking and free movement of terrorists and insurgents. So, open and porous border provides a safe haven for smugglers, criminals and terrorists to carry out their activities in an uninterrupted manner. For example, if we take the cross-border human trafficking, border areas of Bihar, UP and West Bengal are most vulnerable to trafficking from Nepal. Some important routes used by human traffickers include the Saunali border in the Maharajganj district of Uttar Pradesh and Bairganya, Raksul and Nakatiya Ganj borders in Bihar. See, in these borders, no, it is difficult to curtail this crime because every day thousands move across the border and it becomes difficult to identify or distinguish between a legal migrant and a victim of trafficking. So, mechanisms have been instituted to manage such security issues. For example, we use certain measures like Home Secretary level meetings, joint working groups on border management and border district coordination committees for managing such security issues. Okay. So that's all about this news article. See this topic is very much relevant for your GS2 paper in mains examination. And note that regarding the India-Nepal border I discussed the states right. That is very much important for your preliminary examination. So, this topic is covered in a holistic manner combining both your prelims perspective and mains perspective. Okay. So, with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Now, have a look at this news article. 
the news article talks about the international yoga day celebrations throughout the country mass demonstration events were held at 75 iconic locations so in this context let us see about yoga and the significance of international yoga day see yoga is a discipline originated in india that dates back to thousands of years it is a spiritual discipline and a combination of practices that aims to bring harmony between the body and the mind the practice of yoga helps to attain self realization how it is by improving the inherent power of an individual in a balanced way so yoga is regarded as one of the best practices known to calm the inner self yoga was founded by saints and sages know that maharishi patanjali is called as the father of yoga maharishi patanjali has defined yoga as the suppression of the modifications of the mind because yoga works on the mind energy and emotional levels of an individual thus promoting physical and mental well-being overall it has many benefits like increased muscle strength and tone then increased flexibility increased respiration energy and vitality then maintaining a balanced metabolism then it helps in weight reduction also it helps in cardio and circulatory health then improved athletic performance etc etc the very first mention of yoga was in the rigveda and these are the different types of yoga just go through it so because of the benefits associated with yoga today it is practiced in various forms around the world as a result of yoga's global reach india proposed a draft resolution for establishing the international day of yoga at the united nations that is un finally in 2014 un proclaimed 21st june as the international day of yoga this date is special for another reason also it is the summer solstice and the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere am i right and the international day shows the worldwide acceptance of yoga which is a matter of pride for our country the aim of this day is to raise awareness worldwide about the benefits of practicing yoga this will help in promoting a sustainable lifestyle in harmony with planet earth know that this year's theme was yoga for humanity see by celebrating yoga day and practicing it every day yoga came in handy in the covid-19 pandemic it helped in the lockdowns by elevating the suffering then by bringing people together through compassion kindness foster a sense of unity and build resilience among people world over due to this only our prime minister has noted that yoga is becoming a basis for global cooperation okay so that's all about this news article see this topic is very much useful for your preliminary perspective also you can utilize these key points in your mains answer and make your answers unique because in global cooperation you can mention yoga as a way of approaching global cooperation okay so with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article this news article says that a free trade agreement that is fta between india and the united kingdom will be concluded by deepavali the minister for commerce and industry and textiles said that the government was moving ahead on ftas with canada european union and the uk the minister also mentioned that australia israel brazil and the gulf cooperation council countries had expressed an interest to forge ftas with india this is about the news article given here in this context let us see what is this fta or free trade agreement and lastly let us see about the advantages that india stands to gain by signing the free trade agreement with the united kingdom or uk okay first of all what is an fta see fta or free trade agreements are arrangements between two or more countries or trading blocks 
This arrangement primarily aims to reduce or eliminate customs tariff and non-tariff barriers on trade between them. The tariff barriers are the tax or duty imposed on the goods which are traded to or from abroad. On the contrary, a non-tariff barrier is a way to restrict trade using forms other than a tariff. Non-tariff barriers include quotas, embargoes, sanctions and levies. Here, the European Union restricting Alfonso mango imports from India citing phytosanitary issues is an example of non-tariff barriers. Okay, now coming back, FTAs normally cover trade in goods such as agricultural or industrial products or trade in services such as banking, construction, trading, etc. etc. FTAs can also cover other areas such as intellectual property rights, investment, government procurement and competition policy etc. See free trade agreements don't just reduce and eliminate tariffs. They also help to address various issues behind the border such as intellectual property, e-commerce and government procurement. So this is about the free trade agreement or FTA. Now let us see the advantages of signing on FTA with the United Kingdom. See this is how you have to take a topic and cover it in preliminary perspective and then take it exclusively to means. In this way, you can cover both your preliminary preparation and mains preparation on a topic. Okay. Now coming back to a discussion. Right now, the total trade between India and the United Kingdom stood at 16 billion US dollar in the first 11 months of the financial year 2022. When the free trade agreement is signed, this is bound to increase. This is bound to be beneficial to both India and the United Kingdom. Now moving on, see we know India is aiming to integrate into the global supply chain. The United Kingdom is aiming to diversify its supply chain. The United Kingdom is planning to reduce its dependence on China. So by signing the free trade agreement, India can smoothly integrate itself into the UK's supply chain. The UK also can reduce its dependency on China. Am I right? Next. After signing the free trade agreement, the FDA that is the foreign direct investment from the UK will increase. See this will create new economic opportunities in India. The next advantage will be for the customers in the United Kingdom and India. The products will become cheaper as the taxes are rationalized. Finally, with the signing of the free trade agreement, both India and the UK will become more economically integrated. See, with reliable economic integration comes strong political cooperation. This will be beneficial for both the countries in the long run. So, these are some of the advantages of India signing an FTA with the United Kingdom. So, with this, let us conclude this discussion. In this discussion, we saw what is the free trade agreement or FTA. And then we took the discussion further by looking at the advantages of India while signing the free trade agreement with the United Kingdom. Okay. So with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion, which is the preliminary practice question discussion. Today, I have three prelims question for you. Now let's start with the first question. It is regarding our discussion on the International Yoga Day. Okay. Here two statements are given. So whenever two statement question comes, you have to go through both the statements before arriving at the answer. And note that the question is asking for incorrect statement. Okay. Now look at the statement one. See, this was said in the discussion itself, right? Yes, International Day of Yoga is celebrated on 21st of June, which is the same day as the summer solstice. So this statement is correct. Now look at the statement two. T. Krishnamacharya and BKS Iyengar are renowned yoga gurus. See, regarding this, we will have a quick discussion. This statement is also correct. 
Tirumalai Krishnamacharya that is T Krishnamacharya is one of India's most respected authorities on the Vedic tradition and yoga teachings and practice okay and Krishnamacharya was probably the first yoga master to introduce a concept of vinyasa means movement through a series of poses coordinated with breathing he is even referred as the father of modern yoga okay now coming to belur krishnamachar sundar raja that is bks ayyengar was a student of tirumalai krishnamacharya he also was a world renowned yoga teacher famous for his style of yoga called ayyengar yoga these are other yoga gurus recognized by the indian government just go through their names try to remember their names okay so now coming back to the question the question is demanding for incorrect statement so your answer here will be neither one nor two that is option d is the correct answer okay now look at the second question it is regarding the free trade agreements the question says with which of the following countries india has signed the free trade agreements or ftas five countries are given nepal bhutan usa thailand and singapore see the answer for this question is option c 1 2 4 and 5 only so far india has signed 13 free trade agreements it is signed with its trading partners including the three agreements namely india mauritius comprehensive economic cooperation and partnership agreement then india uae comprehensive partnership agreement and india australia economic cooperation and trade agreement these are signed during the last 5 years see i have displayed the list of free trade agreements signed by india you can just go through it in this india australia economic cooperation and trade agreement and the india uae cepa has been signed but not yet implemented okay all other agreements are both signed and under implementation see this is very much important for your prelims okay so except for usa india is having the free trade agreement with nepal bhutan thailand and singapore so your answer for this question will be option c 1 2 4 and 5 only okay now look at this last question it is a three statement question so whenever you have three statement type question or multiple statement question you can try applying elimination technique if possible okay now let me start with statement 3 It says India Nepal border is the longest among the international land borders India shares with its neighbors. See, this statement is absolutely incorrect. The longest international land border is between India and Bangladesh. It is about 4096 km. Whereas if you take India Nepal border, its length is in the fourth place, okay? So if you had found that statement 3 is incorrect, you can eliminate two option here. one is option c another one is option d so the leftover options will be option a and b and from this you can understand the statement 2 is definitely correct so just read the first statement and confirm whether it is correct or incorrect okay the first statement says india does not share open border with any country see in today's discussion itself we saw that india and nepal are sharing open border am i right so this statement is absolutely incorrect so you can eliminate option a and arrive at your answer which is option b two only yes nepal shares border with five indian states who are they they are sikkim west bengal bihar uttar pradesh and uttarakhand okay so that's all for the preliminary practice question now displayed here is a mains question for you go through the question and post your answers in the comment section if you like this video do like share and comment and don't forget to subscribe to the shankar ias academy's youtube channel thank you for listening